Hello, my name's Lee and I'm going to have a look at a, a spoon knife today. <clears throat> I was talking to my friends at Classic Hand Tools about at a show recently. Um, it's by a Swiss company, I believe the brand is pronounced Feel. Um, I've used one of their ads before and heard people say good things about their gouges. And <clears throat> so talking to the people at Classic, they were reasonably happy with this knife and thought it could actually be better. Um, what I was immediately impressed with was the handle. It's got quite a nice flat octagonal handle, which is a nice faceted grip. This is actually a left-handed knife and it's actually got quite a nice open sweep to it as well. So I thought it looked like it's got the potential to be quite a, quite a decent spoon knife. This is what it looks like currently. And I just want to take a few cuts in some fresh birch to show you how it works. Um, I've already started to make a little hollow here and you can see the knife actually cuts reasonably well. It's quite sharp out of the packet, so no real complaints about the way it's presented. Um, but what's wrong with it in terms of the way it wants to turn in the wood is when it gets to the point where this, this shoulder on the bevel starts to engage in the cut and it gets the deeper cuts, it starts to sort of want to chatter a little bit. You can kind of hear it wanting to fight its way out of the wood and you get these kind of lines. And it's quite common with a lot of spoon knives for this to happen. Um, and I think it can be remedied by basically smoothing out and making this nice and gently curved and polished on the back. Just to help it progress through the cut and not have this kind of fulcrum point that this shoulder creates. So that's what I'm going to set about trying to remove. We can see we've got this bevel here and then a shoulder and then another bevel and another shoulder and then there's actually a micro bevel on it as well. Now the cutting edge, the angle is quite good. Um, and the finish is pretty decent, so I think I can improve this by just basically blending out these bevels on the back to make it turn better and trying to eliminate this chatter effect that you get from basically the leverage and impedance caused by this shoulder here as you're trying to turn through a deeper cut. It acts as a bit of a pivot point and tries to actually lever the edge out of the cut, I believe. Um, and that's what causes most of the problems with a lot of a lot of the cheaper spoon knives on the market and obviously there's only one way to remedy that and I spend a little bit more time so I'm going to use my Sorby Pro Edge to just blend this out so I've got a pot of I've got a little pot of water nearby so that when necessary I can quench the blade just to keep it cool as I'm grinding it obviously on a, on a belt grinder such as this it's very easy to generate a lot of friction and a lot of heat really quickly I'm going to keep my hands bare, I don't want any gloves that could get tangled in the machine um, and, and effectively pull me into the machine, so from a safety point of view I'm not going to wear any gloves. What I will be wearing is some decent respiratory protection because as much as we've got the steel dust from the blade we'll also have the ceramic coming off the belts which is not ideal, you don't want it in your lungs. So that's what I'm going to do today is try and improve that, so that's what it looks like now before we started and see these bevels hopefully by the time we finished we won't have any of those so let's crack on and see what we can do
This is where we're at at the minute. I've polished the outer bevel. In doing so, I've actually raised a very slight burr on the inside there, which is exactly what I was hoping to achieve. Nothing too serious. In fact, you might just be able to see a bit of a wire edge there. Anyway, next stage, I'm going to pop it in the vise here and just refine this inner bevel. So I'm going to start at a thousand grit. Make sure that I can see that I'm in contact with the edge and just try and work through this curve just to start to refine this cutting edge. So I'm rotating as I go, making sure I stay away from the, the flappy edge of the paper there. I don't want to engage that. Quite easy with an open sweep like this to maintain good contact with the edge. And really all I'm looking to do is push that burr back to the outside or remove it altogether depending on what the, how firmly attached it was. Then we'll go for two and a half thousand grip. Same setup, just wrap around the dowel enables me to get into this curve and all I'm doing here is just sort of refining the factory bevel so I've maintained their edge geometry all I've done is smoothed out some of the less appealing 
features from the grind. And now what I'm looking to do with the two and a half thousand grit is actually remove the thousand grit scratch pattern. That should be enough. And then five thousand grit is the last stage before stropping. This again just helps to refine that scratch pattern. And then I'm just going to charge this leather strop with a bit of compound. Do a few swipes with that just to polish that inside edge. We can see the colour coming up on the strop there, which means we're removing a tiny amount of material. In the last stage, because if anything I'm going to have pushed that burr to the outside, I'm just going to charge this outside strop. I've got a very slight curve to this strop, it's very slightly concave. It just helps it to hug the shape of a spoon blade. I sharpen quite a few spoon blades, so it's worth having a strop that's specifically set up for the task. And again, I'm trying to make sure I guarantee following the exact angle that I've set on the grinder and get right into that without overdoing it. I don't want to come at it at too steep an angle because that will start to round that nice keen edge over. And being able to get, being able to hold the the tool still in a vice like this. Obviously I've got to be extra careful on the backstroke because coming back across this blade it's locked up solid in the vise. It's not going to move if I hit it. It's just going to take a big chunk out of me. So really got to be careful. That's it. We don't want to overdo the strop and all definitely round the edge over. But just to make sure that that burr is now gone. Just a few more swipes on the inside edge. And hopefully, we should have made a fair bit of improvement there. Let's just have a look at that. So we've got a nice mirror polish on the outside, a nice convex outer bevel. Now all those shoulders are gone. Hope you can see that from that way. There's no hard shoulder there anymore. And we've just cleaned up that inner bevel a little bit to give it a little bit of a shine too. Let's see if it's cutting any better. This is the same piece of wood and the first thing I'm going to do is try it in the hole that we've already made. And straight away we've taken a much heavier shaving with no chatter. You see how that's progressing through that cut. Quite clean out the other side. We're getting quite steep on this outside edge now because I'm technically going against the grain but hopefully you can see and hear how improved that is so much easier to take these shavings now and the knife turning a whole lot better than it was so this should now be more than capable of its task and as you can see it doesn't take forever it does take a little bit of practice but technically you know you don't have to do it on a machine you could do all of that by hand if need be so there you go Job done.